Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay. Just taking a second to get Facebook going. Please work. <laughs> the last time I tried to do this, um, I couldn't get the Facebook Live to work. Oh, fun. I know. I'm convinced that someday they're going to get all this integrated. Someday. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm using Crowdcast because um, it's supposed to. I, I did it. It worked fine the first time, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Go live. It just takes like a full minute. <laughs> hmm. Okay, cool. So, hey everyone, I'm Lauren with Lauren Leslie Studio, and today we're going to be talking about the top five reasons not to enroll in art school, which may seem like a little bit of a controversial uh, perspective. But anyway, um, I wanted to introduce you all to um, Cheryl, who is on with me today. And <laughs> Cheryl, do you want to kind of tell everyone your story and um, what you're doing now and where you went to school and all of that? Okay. Um, I went to the Ohio State University. I <laughs> don't know why I have to emphasize the V, but we always do. Um, and actually, my background, I studied art for more as an academic, art history, uh, theory. There were hands-on art classes, of course, drawing and painting and stuff, but, um, but it was mostly from a, an academic point of view. And I double majored in psychology. Um, so... Um, I, I feel like an accidental designer in a way, like I kind of, yeah, I, in a very strange way, very long journey of a long time. Um, and then last summer I decided to blog. I cool. had lost my job and I was tired of constantly doing things I didn't really enjoy. So I thought mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do what I love, but I had more fun coming up with like branding for my blogs and tapping into all those old art things I used to do. Cool. Um, and then in the groups I belong to, people started asking me, do you do logos for other people? I love your logo. It's like so good. So I thought, well, I guess it's time to start learning Adobe stuff <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and doing it as favors. And then I started getting paid and I, it just all happened really quickly. So you really are self-taught as in terms of design. You went to school, but you design stuff. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think that's so inspiring. And um, we initially started this conversation in the Facebook group, um, the Ellen Company Facebook group with Lauren Hooker, who I'm so inspired by as well. Sorry, my cat's like <laughs> all up in my business. Um, but yeah, and I feel like a lot of people are kind of on the fence about it. Like they feel like they need some school, but um, you know, maybe a lot of, there's also a lot of self-taught designers out there like you are. So it's like, well, um, and then some people kind of defended it a little bit and thought, you know, well, you know, I think that people need the classical training and whatnot um, as well. So it was interesting to hear some different perspectives on that. Um, mm -hmm. But for today, I'll just go through a little bit and um, tell a little bit of my story and go through some um, points that I've sort of thought through uh, in regards to this topic. So we'll get started. So the first slide is, is art school total bullshit? If you're wondering if the student loans are worth it, then you're in the right place because that's what we're going to be really diving into today. And I think that in terms of um, the student loans especially, it's like if you can get a full ride to art school, then I think you should go for it. Um, it's it's more the taking on an insane amount of debt that uh, a lot of art schools, you know, the tuition is really kind of crazy, um, especially. Yeah. Yeah. So especially for what you're getting out of it and what you're going to be paid and what the salary that you're going to be making uh, right out of school. So today's agenda is uh, we'll, we'll go through topics of student debt. Uh, the internet is free, learning by doing, uh, real job skills, and that time is short, life is short, so use your time wisely. Uh, so I'll go just go through my story a little bit for those of you who don't may not know me yet. Um, this is a picture of me coloring in my coloring book on Christmas morning, and um, basically I've always been an artist. I mean, this is, you can tell from the picture, I'm just like so into it. 
while my sister is just patiently kind of waiting for me to play with her. And I'm like, ah, like I'm, I'm can't stop. <laughs> and then in school, I was a, a studio art major. I received my BFA in oil painting. And then I wasn't really sure how to go from there. A lot of people asked me, oh, well, are you going to be a teacher? Because I don't think they knew quite what an art major did beyond just like teaching. And I was <laughs> like, I don't think so. Um, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. And then I ended up taking a year of graphic design courses online. Um, I didn't really need another bachelor's degree, kind of like you, Cheryl. I double majored in, um, in studio art and art history, actually. So, uh, but again, it was like the amount of debt I would have had to take on on top of just getting a bachelor's degree, but to go to grad school was, it was just too much. And I'm really glad that I didn't do that. Um, so instead I did take more courses in graphic design and became a t-shirt designer as my very first job um, in South Carolina. And I worked there for about four years and it was a great first job and I learned a lot, but um, I was ready to move on. So I said, peace out, <laughs> um, <laughs> Atlanta, here I come. And we'll kind of get into uh, how this process uh, came about, but I was ready to move on. South Carolina, I'll always love you. You'll always be my home. As you can see, I'm wearing my home tee. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, basically like, F it if it doesn't make you happy, move on. And I got my first job, at, or my sorry, my second job as a textile designer, uh, which was really fun and I'm still a textile designer. I'm designing rugs. So um, that's where I'm still at like six years later and totally love it. Um, it's a really creative and fun job. And it's been really rewarding because some of my rugs have ended up in anthropology and on West Elm's Instagram with over 20,000 likes, which for any designer, that's like their happiest place when they, when people love their work and they're just like, oh, like, like nobody knows I did this but me, but it's still exciting. <laughs> so. That was kind of cool. Okay, so could I have done it without art school? So let's talk about that. Um, so yeah, the first issue I really want to dive into, and this is probably the biggest one, is the, is the student debt. I think, um, you know, in the last American election, this was a huge topic, and uh, like Bernie Sanders touched on this a lot, and just mm -hmm. overall, it's like a huge crisis, really, in the United States. Um, Americans owe over $1.45 trillion in student debt loan, and that's like with a T, trillion. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? It's just insane. Um, and that's more debt than the total amount of credit card debt in the US, total amount <laughs> of all ages, you know, just the amount of student debt. And in 2017, I looked up SCAS tuition, and it's $36,000 per year. That's $146,000, you know, and like some numbers in four years, but basically. You know, ironically, my husband went to SCAD, like, really? ironically enough, but he's not even a, he's a musician, but, um, but he went to SCAD. So yeah. What's that situation like? Is his, did he have uh, scholarships or? Yeah, he had scholarships, so he didn't have student loans. But uh, I mean, he's he's talked a lot about the education that he got. It's not that he didn't get something out of it. I mean, he's sure. he helps me. You know what I mean? Some of the things that he learned, he helps me from time to time. But, sure. he, you know, the cost, like the comparison of the cost of what he got out of it, that he, um, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I've yeah. gotten I've gotten as much of an education of the things I've done online as he had from SCAD. That's awesome. And what uh, what type of things have you done online to get that education? Um, am I allowed to mention any particular companies or anything? Is that OK? Sure. Yeah. Um, so there's a, an online course, I don't know, collective thing called Udemy, I think is how you say yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, and they have several. I mean, I think you have to look into the professors, but depending on whose course you want to take. But sure. I decided I needed to learn Photoshop so that the things I could do by hand, or not just Photoshop, but Illustrator and InDesign, so the things I can do by hand could be digitized. I just went on there. They had a sale. It was ten ninety nine a class. So for thirty five dollars, I got a year's worth of design school education. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, yeah. So we'll go into that a little bit more um, here in just a minute. Um, and so, yeah, like one of the things with all of that money of 
thousand dollars is that you just get a boring dime a dozen bachelor's degree and that's not anything special like you're not going to stand out from the crowd just having a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. um and i know like the romantic narrative of doing what you love sounds like the debt won't really bother you at the time especially i think to an 18 year old who doesn't fully understand how much money that is like i think to them just like oh like 50 dollars is expensive so i don't i can't even compute like one hundred and forty six thousand dollars and how much my cost of living will be and how much money I'll actually have to put towards that. But a lot of kids end up having to move back in with their parents because they can't afford rent and these student loan payments. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm all about pursuing your dreams. I'm just, I want to talk about maybe like a different way to go about it or at least provide different options for people. Um, because I just think the $146,000 plus interest, by the way, that's, I mean, the interest on that amount of money over 30 years is, I looked it up and now I can't remember what it was, but it was so crazy. Just so, so, so crazy. You know, that's comparable student loan debt to becoming a doctor. And so when you compare the income potential of graphic design, and I don't mean in a perfect case, you're in your average case scenario compared right. to the average case scenario of a doctor. And in terms of being able to repay that with your salary, it's much lower. Exactly. Yeah, it's not like going to med school and like you're like, okay, I can justify it because I'm going to be making X salary. And being a doctor is like really important. I mean, you're dealing with people's lives, like their bodies, their lives, their health. So like you can kind of understand why it would be more expensive. But I mean, a design degree like or an art school degree, like especially it's not just design, but, you know, if you are going into a, like the fine arts or anything. It's just insane what it costs. And yeah, it's really hard to justify when you get out of school, like unless you become famous, which some people do. But like you said, on average, that's not going to be the case and you can't rely on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Cheryl, would you recommend going to uh, art school to a high school graduate or to someone looking to change careers and why or why not? No. Um, I really wouldn't. And um, my main why is that I feel like um, I don't know if you, I'm I'm a little older. I look a little younger. I'm f almost 46. So I have oh. I've kind of this long term perspective on college um, looking at it. And it seems like in the last 15 years, it's exploded into an industry like the student loans alone have exploded into this huge industry. That's really just a way of making money off of people. Um, and this is becoming fairly widely recognized. And so because of that, there has been an explosion of alternative options for people that um, are out there where they can learn from masters. They can learn from, I mean, if you look, you can, you can find people who are famous now, like, um, oh, what's his name? Samuel L. Jackson teaches an acting course online, right? So why would you go to drama school and if you could do that, and it's the same with design and art, there's there's just so much out there as an option. And I think if you're a driven person who's really wants this, that you can get everything that you need another way. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. So if a student had to take out $30,000 per year in the student loans to follow their passion in design, do you think it's worth it? And I think you kind of just answered that, but essentially no right <laughs> no. And, yeah. and i don't even understand why they let someone that young go and i mean they don't even think you're responsible enough to buy a beer but they'll let you go one hundred and fifty thousand dollars into debt you know what that is such you know, a good point yeah life altering decision than than deciding to have a beer most of the time so. <laughs> that's such a good point love that so true okay so yeah i mean the internet i think this is also what you were just touching on is that the world is changing really, really fast and it's just a different world. And like you said, um, it is becoming more of a business, like the idea of going to school and kind of like this whole like romanticized narrative of following your dreams and whatnot. And I, I definitely think you should do that and you should follow your dreams, but like, yeah, there's just more practical ways to approach it. Um, and mm -hmm. with the internet, like the, uh, there's so many more resources that are either free or extremely affordable, uh, just like the class you took um, compared to kind of this stuffy art school tuition that you're raising eyebrows over. And if you want to be a designer, the first thing I would do would just be to sign up for the Adobe Creative Cloud at, you know, 20 bucks a month, 19 
And that gives you access to the latest version of Photoshop. And then the next thing is just to start watching as many videos as you can on YouTube for free. I mean, you can literally do that for 20 bucks a month compared to 30 grand a year. Um, mm -hmm. And at least like, you know, get started. Um, and then I would suggest to just offer to do free design work for people because there's so many people that have blogs or are, you know, entrepreneurs or startups or just have like a photography business or something where, you know, they like you did, like they might just want a logo and, um, and you're going to get better at it just the more you practice and the more you're doing it. And I felt like when I graduated from school, um, even after a year of design courses, and then I had the fine art degree underneath that, um, I felt like I, I definitely didn't feel prepared for work. Like I didn't feel like I learned enough real world job skills in school, which really just made me mad. Like it kind of pissed me off because I mean, my mom helped me with my undergrad and like, I so appreciate that. Uh, but then I paid for the, I took out loans to pay for the extra graphic design courses and just to, for how much money it costs for me to still feel that unprepared going into um, the real world is, I don't know, I don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, I would say that 90% of my design knowledge I learned on the job, which is why I would say like, you know, use the internet as much as possible, like, and then just start working. And you'll probably feel a little bit like, you know, you're kind of a fake it till you make it person. And I totally felt like that when I started and I don't feel like that now, but it's okay because you're, you know, if you're offering to do things for free, then I think the client's going to be a little bit more patient with you. Um, and then yeah. you, you can start, you can just learn as you go. And then you start building a library of design work to create a portfolio. Um, and then you'll be able to show that. You know what I mean? Like people start learning who you are, that they can trust you. So they'll recommend you to other people. Right. I, I, I've only been doing this a few months and I am booked almost entirely solid now with paying clients. And I, it, I have so much work. I haven't even finished my own website, like because of all of this word of mouth referral. So, yeah. um, I mean, and I don't say that to brag, but I started out doing free stuff and then it kind of graduated to exchanging, you know, for something else. And which I don't think should ever be underestimated that the value of being able to exchange doing a logo for someone to help you write your about page. I'm not good at that. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know how to do that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and I've done it for in exchange for getting into courses, online courses that cool. were one of them, an $897 course. Wow. Right? I mean, that's worth a lot. And and that course is, course is all about launching and building your email list and things like that, things that you're never going to learn in design school ever. So, you know, I mean, there's just like so many practical skills that you can learn on, you know what I mean, through different courses and stuff. So I'm a big believer in offering free work and getting something in value in exchange for that. Right. Um, I yeah. like the barter system. <laughs> that's yeah, cool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah. And so then on top of that, like once you've kind of gotten started and you want to kind of fine tune, I would, if you feel like you need it, I would suggest maybe signing up for a Skillshare that's only $15 a month or eight, eight twenty five dollars per month if you want to pay annually. So that's just like an easy way to uh, kind of do things. I've been looking at that. Are you already part of Skillshare? I just signed up. So they offered me like a 99 cent per month. So sometimes they'll give you that like just to kind of get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I was going to ask you the same thing, like how you felt about Skillshare and just like learning via the internet. But if I could go back and tell my younger self, I would say do this first. And then like you can always go to art school if you feel like you really aren't getting it. But I think that this is the best way to approach being well, a designer. As far as like, you know, putting my money where my mouth is with that, I have a 14 year old daughter. She's an only child and she is, I mean, my whole life is my daughter and I want her to have the best life possible. And she's, she's an artist and she already has an idea for an animated like books and series and everything. And she's talked to me about art school and I'm like, just learn Adobe, learn, learn animator, learn all these other things and take your skill. And then if you feel you need additional courses, 
then fine. But I don't want to see her saddled with $50,000 or more of debt when she yeah. graduates college. And, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, so I'm even encouraging her to go that direction. And this is the person I care about most on the planet. I'm encouraging her to go that direction with what she's doing. Because yeah. I think you have the creative spark or you don't. And if you've got it, you don't need to go to art school to be able to do it. You just need the you need the knowledge, but you don't have to pay a university to get it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's super smart. And if you're uh, self-motivated enough or driven enough, and that's why I think almost like going ahead and taking small jobs is a big motivator because you're like, oh, I have to get this done for this client. Like if I was just at my house, you know, on a Saturday and I was like, you know, just graduated from high school, I might not be super motivated to just like, I don't know, go through all these courses. But if I knew there was a person waiting on me to get a logo to them, then I would be like, oh, like I have to do this. Mm -hmm. so I have to figure it out. And I'm, and then I would watch, you know, videos and start taking courses and like try to get better and build uh, the portfolio. So I think that's super smart. So congrats, mom. That's <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. Um, if I could go back and tell my former self that then I totally would. Cause I even feel so guilty about how much money my mom spent on my call, you know, on my bachelor's degree, because anyway, she, you know, because she's a teacher. Told you, you know what I mean? Like you, you took the path that everyone tells you I to did. do. All the counselors in high school tell you that this is the path that you should go. And, you know. Yeah. And you do better. Yeah. And she always <laughs> expected to pay for our college. So I think that she, you know, I think the world is just really changing. Like, I think that's what you used to have to do. Um, and I, yeah. and even if it was just for the bachelor's degree on your resume, I think it would have even when I graduated school, I'm 30, I'm almost 33. So even when I graduated school, I think it would have been tough for me to find a job without that degree. But I still kind of wish I would have just like, um, I don't know, gotten or gone to a less expensive school, even if it was just for that paper. Um, but now I think it's very different. I don't think it matters at all. And even when I was in my first job, I interviewed a lot of other designers and artists to um, to work for us. And a lot of those uh, girls had master's degrees and like, I don't think they were getting paid anything more than the girls that just had bachelor's degrees. So that on top of it was, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they were amazing artists. It was just like, I just don't think that companies or employers necessarily appreciate you know, the extra amount of school or value it enough to like really make a big difference in your salary. Yeah. It's not like, like a teacher, but I've had a close family member who's a school teacher. When you get more education like that, there's a true reflection of it in your salary because there's a very structured thing that like the more education you get, your pay really increases a lot, but you don't see anything like that in the art world. Not that yes. I've <laughs> it's different. Yeah, it's very different. It's just about having that kick ass portfolio and like interviewing really well um, and just being reliable and getting the work done. So yes. I would say um, the next thing I would talk about is uh, to just learn by doing. And we've kind of touched on this, but um, I, I can actually remember just totally hating my first graphic design class, <laughs> which I'm kind of embarrassed about now. But I was a painter, you know, I was on the road to earning my BFA in studio art um, with a concentration in oil painting. And I was at a liberal, liberal arts college. And so, like, I just hated the idea of being at this, like, cold computer working on, like, some corporate logo. Uh, that just didn't really excite me. And I didn't understand the program. And I didn't feel like it was easy to, I don't know, it was just like, I've constantly felt frustrated, I think, trying to learn Illustrator and Photoshop. And I didn't feel like I was really getting taught. I don't know. I just maybe I just didn't have a good teacher. I don't know. Um, I really liked my teacher, but I just always felt frustrated. And so I think it's really tough to, to transition from being used to drawing and painting to doing things digitally. I have this is by far my biggest learning curve in the whole thing is been <laughs> taking it from doing it by hand to doing it digitally. I. You know, because if you click the wrong thing, all of a sudden it doesn't do what you wanted it to do. And you're like, uh, so. Yeah. And you, I mean, you'll click a tool and you're like, I think it's supposed to do this, but then you don't know how to, why it's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is just coming with practice and like being in those programs and um, just really spending a lot of time with them. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, but I think that my perspective was also really limited at that point in time, just because I had no idea what I could do with design or what I could do with those programs. And that, I mean, Photoshop at the end of the day, Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign is really just a tool, just like a paintbrush is a tool. And you just have to learn how to like get that hand and refine it. Um, but I just had no idea what I could do with it. And like school was never gonna get me to where I was eventually going because I became a rug designer. And it, I just think if I, if someone had told me that back when I was painting, I would have been like, what in the world? Like that's so random, <laughs> but you just have to try things and then you find things that you really enjoy. Yep. Um, and so I realized that design could be something I actually loved as much as painting. And I started just researching and following artists and designers and illustrators who really inspired me. And I just started going through this process of like, well, like, what are they doing? Well, that's really cool. Like, I would really enjoy doing work like that. And how are they making money? And, um, and then I just started working on my portfolio day and night. And I was just like focused and, um, and I was just drawing and designing in a way that motivated me like I kind of like found my niche and so I applied for jobs uh, all over the southeast anything that needed an illustrator or a textile designer like those were my two things where I was like this is what uh this is I mean it was drawing basically like it's a lot of drawing but it's still um you know commercial so I applied on LinkedIn for a position as a print and pattern designer at Surya which is a rug wholesaler and I nailed the interview and received an offer so that was kind of how it happened, you know, like I never, I never took a textile design class. I didn't, I didn't even major in graphic design. I, you know, I was a studio art major. So, um, say that again. I said, that's, that's awesome. I oh, thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah. So like I had one graphic design class in college, like in my undergrad. I did too. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I remember we did, we like, we created a piece of furniture. We storyboarded a scene in a movie. We, we created an album cover. We did. Yeah. So nothing was very in depth. You know what I mean? When you do all that in one semester and we had other projects too that I can't even remember now. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I just remember learning about fonts and um, yeah, we did like a couple of logos, like you said, and we, we did like a lot of icon drawings, which you don't do in a real, or at least I don't do that in a real job. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not drawing on paper for my, the rugs that I'm doing. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of, yeah, I just feel like it didn't really totally apply. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I didn't get to this point in my career by taking out like crippling student debt and by attending college. Like that was literally for me just working at night on my portfolio and kind of accepting the challenge of like, and like finding people that inspired me and being like, how did they do it? This is what I want to do. And um, I kind of followed their lead. And so I would just say like the majority of my design knowledge I learned by doing. And it sounds like you're exactly the same thing. Do you find that um, now there are always exceptions. So I don't, I don't mean this in a negative way against anyone who went to design school because there are always people who stand out. Sure. But it seems like a lot of times it kind of, it's like this mechanism that churns out people who do the same thing the same way. Like there's just like this glut of design that all looks the same now. And mm -hmm. it's the, the one thing that draws people to me when they, when they are drawn to me and not everyone is because not everyone is for everybody, but it, they always say your stuff doesn't look like what other people are doing. And I think that it's because I didn't go to design school. You know what I mean? Like I just have a, I don't even know what the, I can go to Pinterest and see what everybody else is doing, but I don't really care to do that. Not exactly. You know what I mean? Like there's some great inspiration out there, but for the most part, I, that's not a huge, I don't know how to explain what I'm saying. I, do, do you know what, do you kind of know what I'm getting at where it just seems like a lot of things are like rinse and repeat these days? Yeah. And I think that, um, I think that not having that training can also give you a really fresh eye. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that that's, valuable and I think it's cool it's it reminds me of when um actually when I'm in my day job and doing these rug designs and all the designers will kind of give their input but then sometimes it's nice to get someone in sales or like you know get someone that's not a designer and see what they like just their immediate impression is because that's what a customer is going to be like I think when they're in the store or shopping online you know it's like okay what's that initial impression they're going to get without like analyzing it and thinking about it too much. And like, 
as designers, we get nerdy over like a cool trendy color or like the construction being a little bit different. But if someone's reaction to it, who's not a designer and it, just their fresh immediate reaction to it isn't positive, then like it's probably not going to be a very good seller. So. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of, um, I'm from St. Louis, so we're all about baseball. So just forgive the <laughs> analogy, but um, that there's, there's all these technical ways to be a perfect baseball player. Right. But then there's like Hank Aaron who held his bat all wrong. Right. But he was amazing mm -hmm. in baseball. And so I think that sometimes there is this thing that people who've been the rules or maybe don't even know what they are. So they've always been kind of doing thing their own things their own way stand out a little bit because there might be this technical thing that like you okay so in perfect design you should have these ratios and everything should always be this compared to this right but sometimes that i mean it gets old it gets repetitive and the thing that's okay. different stands out and that's what somebody wants to buy so like you said someone in sales that comes along and goes oh that's really cool yeah. people, but the design isn't the right ratio that's not the golden ratio right so how could they like that but you know it just seems like that happens yeah, and I mean, again, because I double majored in art history. So, I mean, history is full of people that are just breaking the rules. Like, if you think about um, Cezanne or Matisse or Picasso or um, even the Baroque artists at the time, like, that wasn't... Did you see the, the over my shoulder? Yeah. That's actually, that's actually a signed lithograph from right before he died. Like, that's my... I found that at a yard sale for fun. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that is my thing. I love it. That's very cool. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. Love but um, yeah, I mean, they were shaking things up and like, um, I don't know. Yeah. I just, anytime that basically an artist becomes famous, it's because they're doing something totally out of the norm and out of the classical training, um, mm -hmm. that, you know, society yeah. kind of reacts to, but, Absolutely. but they have skill too. I mean, I think sometimes we forget that too. Like Picasso could paint, photographically perfect renderings of something. And a lot of people don't know that because all they see are, you know, is cubist faces that are all broken up and sticking out every direction. So, yeah. well, yeah, that's because he didn't know how to paint. Well, actually, no. I mean, he could he could do amazing reproductions of reality that you could barely distinguish from something like a photograph. So, you know, um, so I mean, I, I don't want to downplay skills. I don't want to sure. downplay that there are some really great, it's good to know the basic skills too, but it's also good to know how to break the rules. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to know the rules in order to break them. I get that for sure. Um, and he definitely like stuck to like kind of classical compositions and things like that. So um, he kind of he knew the rules. He was um, adhering to some things, but then just like going pretty wild on other things. But you know, society as a whole, obviously, did. that's like a whole nother tangent. But I was but, just saying, I get a feeling that the two of us could geek out on our history and really bore everybody to death. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So if someone decides not to go to art school, what other actions can a student take to pursue their design dreams? What do you think about that? I think, I think just get your hands dirty and start learning everything that you can design things, look at them. Don't be afraid to change them, learn all the technical skills that you can so that that doesn't become a barrier and frustration. Cause I just know for me, that was huge. Like right. learning skills and stuff. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. I think just um, just doing it. Yeah. Like taking the free jobs at first um, and then just like, you know, getting online, getting in, gr in group uh, Facebook groups as well, I think with other designers is really valuable and just like looking at their portfolios and looking at their work and just being able to talk to them. Like, I think that people are really helpful in those communities are very cool, a really good resource nowadays. Yeah. And I, one thing about that is that um, I think that sometimes when you're new to it, you're afraid that everybody is competition and to get over that as fast as possible when you're getting started, because there's so much design work out there. It's OK. There's enough for everybody. <laughs> yeah, we all have enough work to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't I have to turn people away already and I'm new in an experience. You know what I mean? So I can't even imagine you know, how much work other people are turning away. So there is room for you. And I read in an article, but I can't remember where, uh, to always remember, it's never been done by you for them, right? So it's always new, always original. You always have your own thing to bring. And most people are the same way. And every once in a while, you might come across someone who's standoffish because they see you as competition. They're toxic. Don't worry about them. Just get them out of your life and don't worry about it. But yeah, I'm a big believer in joining Facebook groups, collaborating with other designers, getting to know them, 
find out what their processes are. I, um, I do you know Kathy Olson from Love Inspired? She's uh, I don't think I do. Um, but it's a she's really great. That she was one of the first designers that um, I started. I used something of hers and then I altered it and created my own design. And when I showed it to her, she sent me a message. She's like, "You should be a designer. That's really good." Oh, cool. <laughs> encourage me. And those are the kinds of people, you know, network with those kinds of people, nurture those relationships and it'll mm. get you, it'll get you far. That's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So real job skills. Uh, so like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, when I landed my first job, I kind of felt like a phony and it was like, yeah, like I knew the core basics of graphic design. I think a lot of designers feel like this when they graduate from school, but I knew the core basics of graphic design. Like I could make some shapes in Illustrator. I could use a few of the selection tools in Photoshop, but I really couldn't shake this feeling that I had bamboozled my boss into hiring me because I felt so completely lost and unprepared for real work. And again, that's something that really annoys me about school is that I just feel like I, it didn't prepare me with real job skills. Like art school really didn't provide that. Um, not only in a traditional design job, which it, it totally should, but also in, you know, if you were going to go out on your own and start your own design business, there's like nothing. I mean, at least for where I went to school and I feel like other designers say this as well, but I, I didn't feel like I knew how to brand myself. I didn't feel like, um, I don't know. Um, I just think that <laughs> the amount of yeah. the tuition costs, it, it should really like prepare you a little bit better. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't mean to downplay things like philosophy and stuff, but and those were great classes and I enjoyed taking them, but maybe a few more practical courses on how to develop processes so that when you're running your own business, you're doing it for real. You know, right. I, I, yeah, I, I think, so. yeah, there's just not a lot of that involved in school. It's really, it seems like it's a machine to get you to go intern for somebody <laughs> like more than anything else, but not how to be able to succeed at your own thing. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And so, yeah, even though I had had uh, four long years earning a BFA uh, and then taking a year of graphic design courses on top of that, I felt like my very first big girl job uh, had I didn't have any real relevant skills. And the great thing about a liberal, liberal arts education, again, like not to totally, um, you know, criticize it, it, is it does teach you how to think. So I was appreciative of that. Um, I think that there's a lot of critical thinking involved. And so I was grateful for that. And um, I definitely had the, I think the confidence and the attitude that I could figure it out. I think I was just like a little bit annoyed that, uh, yeah, that I didn't already know how to do some of these things in my job. Like I didn't like being there and feeling like I didn't know what I, like how to get the job done. Um, but if I became a rug designer without ever taking one textile design class, then I think like, just like me or you, anyone can acquire their real job skills while we're working. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I learned in design from a client who was the first one who wanted to document to go along with something. And I'm like, well, I, I subscribed to Adobe and they had a Black Friday special where you could get everything for like, I think it's $40 a month. Like you literally get all of their applications. Um, yeah. But you do that during the Black Friday special. So I had it and I'm like, I guess I'm learning in design now. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is how it goes. You have to be willing to take those chances. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, so we also kind of touched on this earlier, but do you think a bachelor a bachelor's degree or a master's degree is necessary on a designer's resume? No, I think a portfolio speaks more. Um, I and I, I say that as I there have been a lot of articles and stuff lately that if you even read in Forbes or Fortune or anything like that, that because it's becoming more common for people to acquire their skills outside of a university setting, that they're a lot of employers now are looking more towards, it's funny, I've got my, I've got my dogs locked out. Um, but uh, th yeah, they're, they're really looking more for, can you do the work, actual work, than do you have a degree, right? You know right. what I mean? They right. want to see what you can do. And so, no, I, I really don't. But I do think you need to find some way of showing that you know what you're doing. So, right. Uh, yeah. So I think you need to build up something that can show that. But no, I don't think you need a degree. And most in larger companies that pay more are actually leading the way in that, ironically enough. Oh. It's mid-level companies that are still stuck in that 
do you have a degree mindset? So if you're thinking that, well, maybe I'll start at a smaller company, actually, you might want to start looking at New York City because those are the people who are they're they're more up to date on what the current job market is really like. And they will care more about your experience than about your degree. OK, so you don't. So like you're saying, like mid-level companies, they might count it against you, but some of these bigger companies will not. Yeah, it's kind of an ironic thing. It's like the uh, with a startup or with a very established but like forward type of company. Yeah. Um, like if you want to work at Calvin Klein, you're going to have a fairly decent shot against someone with a degree if you've got experience, just as an, an example. But if you are looking at something much more mid-level, there's... Um, there's sort of a mid-level mentality that has a harder time changing. It's very stuck in a rut. So um, they, they still look for degrees, but mm -hmm. not the higher level ones. Yeah. So for that, I would say, um, again, like, I don't, I don't know that people shouldn't get any school. Like, maybe they should still go to college or, uh, I don't know, go to community college at least and kind of have that experience and get some education. But... Again, I would just suggest like <laughs> trying to get, you know, wherever is giving you the most scholarships. I mean, there's more that goes into it than that. You want to be like happy with your choice. But I just would, yeah, I recommend to anyone to really be careful about how much debt you're taking on because it will cripple you. Like it will prevent you from buying a house later in life. And I know as an 18 year old, you're like, that's so far away. Like I'm I don't even know, you know, it's like so hard to imagine that that far down the road, but it happens faster than you think. And um, now we have a generation of Gen Y people who can't afford houses. I mean, there, there's story after story on that in the media, how the home ownership is at an all time low in that age group. And it's directly related to student loans. So, yeah. And so now we have people who've got kids who are renting, who are perpetual renters and yeah, and have to do a lot more moving. I, I mean, I just say this as someone who was like on the cusp of that. And I experienced some of the consequences of that, too. A daughter who had to change schools a lot when she was younger because we didn't own anything yet. And a lot of that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, definitely it's more of an impact than people think it's going to be. And um, when you're young, it's really easy to think it's not going to make any difference, but it's going to. Right. Definitely. I'm not trying to say I feel like I've been really negative on it. You know, some no. people do very, very well going to a university that's that system fits their personality very well. They're extremely successful. That broad base of education works well for them. And I think that if you know yourself and you think this is what will work for me, then you should do that, you know, but right. I just don't want people thinking that's the only choice that they have out there. If they know exactly. something else will work better for them, don't be afraid to not get the university education. Right, right, right. Okay, so the last uh, kind of point is just about time. And I think just as I've like gotten older, I think I realized like how short life really is. And like, you, we just really don't have that much time to, um, you know, get started. It just makes me wish I had gotten started so much earlier and, um, you know, on the design stuff. So while there are some things I appreciate about my formal education, for sure, like it's not like it was a total waste of time, but it, it does make me cringe to think about how much time was wasted on some pretty useful, useless shit. Like there were plenty of enjoyable classes that I took in school, but it was like they had no real application in the real world, at least for what I was going to end up doing. Um, for example, I took like sculpture and ceramics and while those were really fun classes and I really enjoyed them, I've like never used that. I, I mean, I just, I don't know. It does, I mean, it helps you like think in more a 3D way, I guess. But I mean, I've never applied like those skills that I learned, you know, about keeping the clay moist and like, I don't know, just things like that. It's just like, I've never needed that. And I almost wish that I had just waited and taken things that I, were, I was gonna need like right out of school at that time. And then later, if I wanted to take a ceramics class or a sculpture class, I could do that now like as a hobby or you know do that and even when i'm retired or something like that but mm -hmm. um yeah i just don't think i think the importance on those classes because i had to have those classes for my degree because i was a bfa um and yeah i just wish like maybe like a the business side of design or even the business side of fine because i was a fine art major so maybe that would have been more applicable uh but yeah, I just think like how to use that in the real world would have been a better focus than some of these more, I guess, more classical uh, courses. 
Mm -hmm. That's actually the reason I didn't go the BFA route was because I didn't want to have to. I got to limit my hands-on classes to things that were 2D. I don't get into sculpture. I don't get it. Although, ironically, um, I, what, the more I do this, the more I like working with people who have physical products and I'm getting more into like packaging design. So hmm. might have benefited a little bit from the 3D stuff, ironically enough. But um, yeah, I, did, I mean, that was one of the reasons that it kept me from it and that I went the other direction because there's a lot that you have to take that even if you had no interest in it, or um, I actually got a scholarship to the Art Institute. Now, this was a long, long time. This was 1989 when I graduated high school. <laughs> um, and But you were required to take dance classes. Like it, no matter what your major was, you wow. had to take some things from their other programs, right? And I was like, I'm not taking dance classes. So. I mean, I'm sure dance is cool, but it's like, why? Like, I mean, that's a waste of time. I yeah, know. I never had any interest for me whatsoever. And you also had to take some drama. Like, I was only interested in mostly fine art, you know, the art and then voice. I did do vocal performance. But, um, but yeah, I was like, no, no, no <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So, yeah, I guess just this all kind of goes back to start working now because, time is short and you really will be ahead. Like I felt very behind when I graduated, um, even though I was probably in the same boat as other people my age. Um, um, but yeah, I would just say start working now. And if I had learned Photoshop and Illustrator like in high school or even started learning it like freshman year of college, I would be like light years ahead. Um, my daughter, we just did her high school registration last week. Um, and she's she's going to be a freshman next year. And Photoshop, they want you to map out your four years from the beginning. They have a class as a senior that gives you college credit on Photoshop. And I'm like, she's enrolling. Oh. I didn't give her a choice. <laughs> You're taking that class. So, yeah, absolutely. Start doing that stuff as soon as possible. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like it's going to be so much better for her <laughs> than it was for us. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, like if I had started working with clients while I was in college, I think I would have found my path a lot sooner and been more clear about the direction I wanted to go in um, instead of just being kind of confused and like all over the place. But um, life is just extremely short and the time to start pursuing your dreams is now. <laughs> so my advice is just go to the school you can afford and immediately start a side hustle, like just start doing it and then uh, you will figure it out. And it'll, it'll help you kind of get more clear about what you enjoy. You know, you might take on work and realize that you don't enjoy that, but you might take on other work where you're like, oh, I love this. Um, and like, you know, really go down that direction. I think the side hustle is a really great idea because it gets you in a professional mindset right from the beginning and it'll help you start developing discipline and time management skills. And you'll be way ahead of the game if you're doing that when you're in school. Right. Totally agree. <laughs> um, okay. So do you recommend graduate school for designers? I don't think we need to. <laughs> I think we know your answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I actually worked with a girl at my last job. Uh, still in the rug design, but she was at SCAD and she was in graduate school and she had an internship with us and uh, she did really well and she got a job offer and she was like, what do I do? Do I quit? I'm in the middle of school of my graduate school program, but I have this job offer. Like, what should I do? And her teacher literally told her, take the job. He was like, he basically told her that grad school was pointless. Because that's why she's in school, right? So yeah. if you're already reaping the benefit of it, why would you keep going? Yeah. And you're not going to get that. Like it's, I guess his point too is that it's not going to matter later on. Like the work experience that you're getting is going to be more valuable than getting your master's degree. And that's why I think one of the most, uh, I will say, if you want to go to school, go somewhere that does internships, that's got really, really great internship programs, at least do that much for yourself. Because yeah, on the job experience is, and even, even for things outside of design, I've noticed that one of the, it's such a long story, but for a while I was doing medical coding and compliance. So oh, wow. I know it's like so weird, but the skills I learned and I, I helped um, set up a department from scratch, like literally turned a storage room into a billing department. Um, and the skills that I learned doing that 
were more helpful to me as far as establishing a solid business foundation under what I'm doing than anything else that I've done. So I think that any you can harness any kind of experience. So yeah, internships are fantastic. And any work that you can do while you're in school is going to help because yeah, it that like knowing how to organize your files so that you know where to find things and right. all yeah, I mean, just just those general skills are even so incredibly value valuable. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Totally agree. Okay, so that's kind of the end of um, the questions that I had and uh, the the kind of points I was making. But uh, for anyone who's watching, I would love to have you co-host if you're interested uh, in hosting another webinar with me. Uh, then I would love to have you. Uh, you can go to laurenlesley.com slash co-host dash webinar to apply. And it's a lot less scary than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so it's not that bad. But it's actually fun. <laughs> Good. So. I'm glad. Yeah, I, I had fun too. It's really way more fun having another person on with you than trying to do it by yourself. <laughs> but um, yeah, or if you don't want to be on screen, I totally get it. Um, but you can maybe apply to do a, a a guest blog post. I'm also looking for those. So uh, laurenlesley.com slash guest dash blog dash post uh, if you're interested in applying for that. And topics that I'm looking for are like online brand identity, color and marketing or color psychology, uh, design trends for 2018, home decor tips, like if you're an interior designer or just folks in the industry, that's my day job. So I'm definitely interested in that. <laughs> Uh, how to be successful on Etsy or creative market, uh, passive income with a design focus or tips for surface designers, or just any, any kind of really marketing strategy online. Like if you've had a lot of success with your email list growth, doing webinars, uh, social media, and you have a secret or a strategy you feel like you would want to share, then I'm definitely interested in that as well. And for those of you who are watching, I also created a free course called Photoshop for Dumbo Heads. So <laughs> So again, like if anyone just wants to get started, uh, it's a totally free course. Um, I do have an affiliate link to Photoshop. Uh, you can download the free trial. So again, it's totally free. But um, if you want to, you can also sign up for the, uh, I think it's $9.99 a month for the photography package. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in that, um, I do get a, an affiliate commission, but it's totally free for you, which is what matters. So if anyone has any questions for me, uh, feel free to write it in the comments. Um, even if you're watching the replay, uh, definitely um, chime in in the comments and uh, let's keep the conversation going because I would love to respond to you. Uh, Cheryl, do you have any kind of closing thoughts or where can people find you online? Um, um, I'm in coming soon mode, but um, CherylSpringer.com. Okay. And you know, I keep telling myself that I'm eventually going to focus on my own business and stop <laughs> focusing on everybody else's. But, um, you know, it pays uh, bills to be designing for other people and not for myself. So it's a sure. little bit. Um, I am convinced that by the end of February, I am going to have my site up and running, at least a basic awesome. version of it. So CherylSpringer.com and on Facebook at Cheryl Springer Design Management. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I'm at Lauren Leslie Studio on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest. So if you're on any of those channels, um, feel free to connect with me. And Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on. It's been awesome talking to you. Thank you. I, had, I really had a good time. Good. Thanks. I'm glad. All right. Well, have a wonderful Sunday. And I'm sure I'll see you in the L chat group, uh, Facebook group. <laughs> All right. Yep. Bye. Bye. See ya.